I'm not camming today because I feel like slush. So you can get, no uh, cam. No, Dude. I'll give you. Uh, I want it. <laughs> give you this <laughs> okay, that's good. It's gonna say I want to just see like a a booger covered shirt. Like you've just been <laughs> sneezing like crazy the mm -hmm. last three days. I have no pants on, and I'm sitting here sweating because <laughs> it's a hundred degrees here. So, dude, it is hot as outside. Yep. It is disgusting. It's so hot that even though my pool has like ample amounts of chlorine, it just started growing algae. It's growing, you're growing a whole guy out there. I literally so have like warm. swamp level temperatures in my yard. Mm -mm -mm. The corn has also grown like two feet. I used to be able to see there's like a you know bunch of buildings behind the field that I live by. Mm. And uh, the corn has just overtaken it because it's got so hot and rainy the last few days. Does corn thrive in extreme heat? This corn seems to thrive in extreme heat because the corn is, is fucking tall. Damn. It's really fucking tall. Damn, can you guys hear my laptop fan? That's going sicko mode. No, I don't think so. Oh, that's so. good. Hold on. <laughs> just put it right up to the fan. Just blow hot air all over the viewers. McNasty, mm -mm. are you doing camera today? No way I'm the only one on camera today. Recording, say, start virtual. Are you not recording yet? I'm recording. Wow, we would have we would have missed on all McNasty's interesting conversation there. I don't think he said that a word. Is true. <laughs> you guys know that there's uh shut up! Do you guys know there's four D theaters now? What does that mean? Four, huh? So you can go see like whatever Sharknado or or whatever, and okay. they will, they will actually dump water on you if you opt into it in the seats. No way. No, Apparently, wait, this the, is a very real the, thing. Then the, then the theater's cooked for the rest of the... Like, you could use the theater, theater again. There's like, there's like wet seats. 4D. 4D. 40, 40 oh, 4D. Theaters. Oh. I can understand, like, maybe wind or something. But, like, how do you... Uh, you can't just have a movie after soaking wet chairs. just drop a shark chairs. on a random, like, viewer. <laughs> <laughs> An entire blue Would you like whale to opt in for in. shark? <laughs> you might die. <laughs> it's a very oh, big shark. My throat to laugh. It is hungry. Uh, I, uh, I'd like you to fact check yourself on the water, please. Okay, okay, so you could see Twisters in 4DX. Okay. Uh, oh, apparently yeah. Apparently, there's what special the effects. Mean? Um, uh, experience. Um, <laughs> the 4DX experience, which is redundant to say, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. The 4D experience experience will have you in the middle of action so you can feel the power of an F5. Did you slap an ass? No, I tossed something in the trash. Okay, F an F five so is tornado so like right in your seat. Three hundred mile an hour wind in your seat. Like <laughs> I would be blown is around the theater. Lethal. Yeah, popcorn is <laughs> lethal. Fucking... Like one straw gets loose, it's going through your head. Just chocolate raisins flying everywhere. <laughs> Ew! <laughs> God, oh, that's that pisses me off more than dying at the movie theater. You eat chocolate raisins? No, I just for some reason that like popped up in my mind as a movie theater thing. I have not been to the movies in like I feel like ten years. Dude, I actually I feel like the, the last movies. time I went was like, God, what movie? it would probably would have been a Marvel movie, like same Civil War or something like that back in the day. I, think, I feel like I've not gone since pre-COVID. I think the last thing I saw was Endgame. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, sorry, yeah, that would have been that probably would have been the last thing I saw. I think the last thing I Dude, saw was Avatar, the first one when it came out. <laughs> Dude, oh my God. Yeah. What year was was that? Like two thousand nine? It's been a long time. Wow. I used to go to the movies a lot when I was a kid because I would ditch school. And like, what is right it? Uh, I was gonna say, what is it that you don't like about them now? Uh, it's not that I don't. Like. Oh no, no, no! The last movie I saw was Ted Two. That was the last thing I saw. What? That sounds about right. You broke yeah. your hiatus for Ted Two. Well, I saw the first Ted. Uh, I remember my grandpa. So, so I just had to see the second Ted. <laughs> well, I see, saw, the, I first saw one. the first Ted and thought, "Wow, I'm never going to see another one if they do that." <laughs> well, I remember I, uh, I went. I went to the first one. My grandpa like knew somebody who could get like the pre-screening tickets. So I like saw the movie before it actually came out and then he got the same thing for the second one. So I was like, I got to do it again with my grandpa, you know, that is the least cool flex. Did you get to meet Ted when you went? <laughs> Did you meet the Ted? Yeah. Was it a meet and greet? <laughs> was, was Seth MacFarlane Oh, there? I farted. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Shown on camera. Um, True. That is me right now. Live do reaction. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's not that I don't hate the movie theater, it's just, uh... Wait. Uh, I don't even really watch movies, Those... honestly, very much. It's... Okay, never mind. Yeah, alright, that's fair. 
I uh, I feel like I've lost a tolerance for listening to people talk during movies. Mm. What do you like? like I used other to be people? okay with that. Yeah. Well, you go to a theater and oh, people, people just yeah. yeah. Then like parents don't want to get babysitters, which I get because movies are now expensive. Babysitters are expensive. I understand that. That's you know, but like, damn, surely you can give them like a family friend or something because it is so annoying. And you bring these little like booger flicking little fuckheads into the theater they need cages in the theater to just <laughs> store your child for the hour that's story, what they fucking need story every your cage child. has an ipad and you sit there Correct. and fucking play and roblox it's like a, on loop just like a big u-haul truck that you just throw them in the back of and leave them there for an hour yes yeah i, I don't know leave I, in the car I can't deal with the ac that, off fuck it yeah put put some music Padlock on the for door them, no music Padlock. actually put on like no, mozart just fives mm-hmm. Put on that Freak one metal. song that Do made during Stumble Guys. Like, <laughs> no, not that. <laughs> not that. Do you still have that saved on your thing? Uh, I don't think so. Think My I editor did. didn't use much of that, obviously, because it wasn't gameplay or anything. And I'm so sad about it. That bit was so fucking funny. Nope, that ain't it. Sorry. That is not it. Oh, that sounded pretty, though. Yeah, that um, was... That was not my editor kept in a hundred percent of it. Me too. <laughs> I forgot to tell my editor that that video was sponsored, and he left in so the most stumbled scuffed guy. shit, dude. Yeah, dude, you're the worst behaved person on earth during sponsors. <laughs> you are correct. You are actually. I used terrible. to be way worse. Come on, at least now I don't. Say you were pretty bad this time. Stuff. You you were pretty fucking bad. Like especially when you were losing, like in the coin game, because you're too fucking stupid to walk into oh, floating yeah. PNGs. Like. Bro, yeah. what? I was, I was doing ass the first time. I don't know. I was... You're just bad. You're just, you're I just, just a bad I was like, I like, Every time I went to go for a coin, somebody would take the fucking coin. It was pissing me off. I don't care about that. I'm just, I don't give a fuck about your gameplay. You just you become a terrible person when we're doing sponsors. Yeah, you're just That's like, like oh, dropping slurs paid. and like yeah. four letter words that cannot be said <laughs> constantly. Like, oh, I'm getting paid. Better, better be a fucking moron. I still remember this. Well, I think it was Warface. I yes, you it was for, Warface. I have the clip. Oh, that and, was way back you in the were, day. You were just on some gremlin shit. We were that. doing like was, a uh, like a campaign thingy, huh? I yeah. I was. You were just kind of there to hang out. You, <laughs> yeah, were, you like, were literally there. You to were like, help. the, the oh, dude ain't help. getting paid today, boy. I'll help. tell you what. I use oh, help man. very loosely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember saying some stuff back then. Some fangs. Yeah. yeah. So you did behave. To be fair, when we played with the devs. I think were you even in that actually? Yeah, yeah. Because that, that was dude that didn't behave. That was that the, was when I, I remember there was on one the dev on the other then, team uh, that kept like going fucking sicko mode on us. Yeah, he kept spawn killing us in his game because he knew the spawns and it's like, dude, that's <laughs> fucking sick. Yeah. You're paying me to get gameplay right now and spawn camping me. That's fucking dope. <laughs> cool. Was that that was the same sponsor where we did with Matt Pat, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was the Matt Pat incident. <laughs> joked about yeah, Make a Wish. Yeah, that was the great Matt Pat incident. And he works of, uh, with Make a Wish. A lot. Yeah. I love the Make-A-Wish kids. Come on. Okay, Come on. well, all right, Doc. <clears throat> okay, yeah. Did you guys see his tweet? You mean where he's playing checkers with a <laughs> small <laughs> POV child? Yeah. What a man, that goes hard. What bro, a hard tweet. Bro, bro really cooked like he's <laughs> like, Oh yeah, we're coming back. Like it was hyped. Like the whole internet was just waiting for the return of Doc. Uh-huh. Bro, what? <laughs> oh yeah. That was ridiculous. You were playing you weren't playing chess by grooming a minor. You were just being a piece of shit. I don't know. Like what is what is, what was that implying? Yeah, a parasocial social, social relationship is kinda like playing checkers against someone playing chess. Yeah, that's sick, dude. Sick tweet. <laughs> It has been bad lately with the whole fucking Ava situation too. Oh, I don't no. know. I don't, that one it's I like still a flavor know. of the just, month now. Yeah, just, it's literally just, just yeah. fucked. The Ava situation was so much worse. Not like worse than Doc, I should say, but like so much worse than everyone thought it was originally. Where they're like, oh yeah, no, that was that sure was weird. But the person came out and said it wasn't that bad. And then just like fifteen other things popped off. Yeah. Yeah. I feel bad for Mr. Beast, but if he didn't know what was going on anyway, if he yeah. if he did then. You know, time will tell, I don't feel I like he would, he would keep somebody like that around if he really knew. No, I mean the second not, he came out, he completely denounced her and just like, was like, yeah, yeah you're fired. Yeah, that's yeah. just crazy. I just don't understand. Somebody's got to do a study mm-hmm. of why. I mean, I feel like you can kind of de- deduce it yourself pretty easily, but why every single time mm. a YouTuber or like even a person gets a little bit of power, they just immediately go to grooming, like. Yeah, I don't, why? Like, if yeah. you're gonna Do use I, your power to talk to a fan, at least talk to an adult fan. 
Like, why do you but have like, to immediately go for somebody that's still in high school? It's weird. Wouldn't it be the opposite? Like, oh, I'm I'm successful and and you know wealthy now. Like. I feel like you don't need to go for somebody yeah, that you have a power dynamic over. You're right. You're successful Correct. and wealthy. You could just you're like an attractive anybody. person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you know, you're you're you're. It's just it's just so odd. I just don't. I mean, I none of us want to. I hope anyway. Um, <laughs> none no? of us understand it. Absolutely so not. Just, you, yeah, you, so get, just, you, you get all this power and like attention and money and whatever, and then you get this crossroads. Do I want to keep? All my money, maybe my wife and kids in the case of Doc, or do I want to message one minor? Yeah, yeah how do you explain? I wonder if what's going to happen Tough. with his wife. Probably isn't just he, one either. Apparently yeah. he just went on vacation with his wife. Which, dude, she's a fucking... I don't know if she's either a trooper or, you know... Idiot. <laughs> not, not yet. I was just trying to say that very politely because I don't know her at all in her position. But like, mm -hmm. not only did he cheat, but now he's potentially with a minor. It's like... How do you explain that? I have no idea. How do you sit your wife down of multiple years that you have a child with? And go, yeah, you know, there was some weird messages with the child. We didn't, we didn't meet up, but there was some weird shit. Yeah, like I emotionally cheated on you with a minor over the internet. <laughs> you know. Oh God, I love our, I love our little sphere of the world. Just what is just wrong a bunch with of this little... side of entertainment? I don't understand. I, I mean, no I don't know. Little little basement dwelling gremlins. You give them money. You give them a little bit of power. They're uh, they're too stupid to go to therapy. They uh, they message minor. Back to square one. Now now basement dweller with no money or power again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, rinse and repeat. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 bad. It's uh it's a it's been a bad few years to be under eighteen. I'll tell you what. Has, yeah, if yeah. you're if you're under eighteen, please stop talking to anyone on the internet. Just don't do it anymore. Yeah, just don't do it. Have your parents vet them first. Correct. Yeah, take okay, them maybe to the don't vet. actually do that. Yeah. <laughs> get them anyway, spayed and neutered. Go to the vet, get your dog groomed instead of you. Anyway, um, <laughs> are you gonna talk about your guys, fucking uh, your setup? Yeah, blogs yeah, in a I different guess I to, place. Yeah, I guess I gotta talk about. It looks like you're in like a like a hotel lobby or something. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's like actually my my guest bedroom. Um, oh, yeah, I uh, I needed to redo it anyway. I uh, wasn't I didn't I didn't love the way I decorated it right when I moved in. But you know when you kind of move into a house, you're just like fuck it, you know I'll sort it out later and, and I'm deal still with all doing that, that stuff. Yeah, I, I mean it, shit. Yeah, it's been like I, I the yeah, rest of my house is decorated. Office, <laughs> it was decorated. I just it just wasn't wasn't the vibe I liked. The rest of my house is kind of this vibe of like. You know, browns, greens, like earthy tones and stuff. So I was redoing it anyway. Oh yeah. And then uh, I'm working on another channel, um, that is definitely a little different from standard gaming stuff. And uh, I feel like my old office just well, I shouldn't say my old office, it's still my current office. Uh, it just didn't really suit the vibe of what I wanted to do on the new channel. So I was just like, fuck it's it. Very like a I'll just man KB your other area. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's not a big room either so it was super easy there's just like a bed over there like nightstands and mirrors and paintings and all is that this shit exactly how like, you're gonna do like the camera angle yeah i think so well that's so that's why i'm doing the podcast here is i wanted to test what what kind of works and what doesn't work and i'll get i can uh you know get some feedback from not only you guys but the editors and then me watching the footage later to see what i can improve for the actual other channel because uh like i was kind of telling you before the podcast it's it's a bitch to record those so I, I kind of figured if I was going to fuck one thing up, it's a goons podcast that's already scuffed rather than my new channel. So, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah so so this is uh, this is just a little test run. Um, I kind of have like wires everywhere. Luckily, you can't really see them because I'm still trying to I don't have actual lights yet facing me. So the ice. Yeah, I don't see the wire coming not... out of your microphone. Looks like you're just holding yeah. a wireless. Well, that's why that's also why I wore all black today. I was like, all right, I got to uh. see like if I need to record you know for the other channel if i want to get that done before my lights come how how impossible is it to see me if i'm wearing dark colors it's not that bad i just look like a, a i have no like definition anywhere i'm just like a, a black yeah like silhouette void. just a, a silhouette of a guy i look like a, a character that hasn't been unlocked yet i kind of so. like the idea of you just like wearing all black every time you do the videos because then it's more of like a serious blark because you usually wear like uh, but i don't i don't want to be super serious like i mean i don't know it's uh, 
for those that, I guess I should explain the channel. For those that don't know, I'm kind of working on, uh, I don't want to call it a science channel because it's going to have more than that. Um, it's also going to have like, you know, history and whatever, honestly, whatever fun stuff. Knowledge. I can, yeah. Knowledge. I, I don't, anything, shit. whatever, whatever, not even like there is like, I'm doing a video right now on, um, Oh my god, I almost said Epstein. That's the wrong guy. Edison. <laughs> Maybe an Epstein video. Who knows? There's enough documented. But Edison. Uh, how Thomas Edison was... He was a genuine fucking psychopath. Oh, like, yeah. He, like, not even a little bit. Like, you know, it's it's pretty common knowledge that he wasn't a good dude. Um, but a lot of people think, like, not being a good dude is kind of, you know, giving himself credit for coming up with the idea of a light bulb, despite the fact that... What if he DM'd uh, miners? Uh, probably not. He probably I wrote some letters he on pitch. He probably would have sent them to my He would have. He yeah. definitely <laughs> would have. Bro, he that guy like just fucking. He just loved killing animals, and he, he killed his research assistant. Like he, huh? he just what the heck? Like so not directly. So in a uh, lab accident. Do we want to? Do we want to get into this? I can. I can explain a little bit of. Uh, you can yeah, give us a little medicine. taste. Give us a little taste. Of All it. right. Um, okay. Can't just so yeah. Tease me with that. So Edison obviously is well known for making. The, he made the incandescent light bulb. So he didn't actually come up with the idea of a light bulbs. Um, what was this guy's name? Humphrey something. It was a really fucking goofy name. But he invented something called an arc lamp. Uh, but it was too powerful to use indoors, too bright, stuff like that. So like, but it, it lined neighborhoods. So he he grew up around light. It wasn't like he was just sitting there candle and was like, I'm gonna make a fucking light bulb. Yeah. The idea of it was already kind of there, um, just not the actual like incandescent light bulb. Mm -hmm. So he. Uh, he did come up with that, to be fair. He tried using like 300 different things, I, I, I believe it was. He tried using turtle shells. So he was literally killing turtles um, to, to make interesting inca to make incandescent bulbs. He thought that that, was, that would be a good medium for the electricity to flow through that would glow. Uh, that didn't work well, obviously, because it, it's, it's fucking turtles. Uh, so then he Correct. ended up getting, uh, it was uh bamboo with a carbon layer around it and then i think he switched to something else i can't remember what he switched to after but regardless he did come up with the light bulb but uh so he had some beef uh when oh, yeah. they were actually starting to put power lines in major cities like new york and stuff like that uh he was a big proprietor of of dc power um direct current and there was a man named westinghouse i believe was his last name uh he was his main competitor and he used a lot of ac power which is alternating current ac power was definitely a lot more efficient like one generator could cover a, a larger area than than dc could um and also i'd like to point out i know nothing about electricity so if some of this is is slightly incorrect you know my my apologies um <laughs> so he was he was beefing with this guy and his argument was that AC power is is too dangerous. It's more dangerous than than DC power. So what he started to do to get the public's attention about the dangers of AC power, instead of like coming up with like a clever way, he literally just started fucking killing animals with it. Like he killed like <laughs> dogs and fucking what? like rats, random animals. He would just kill it and film it. Which one he he died just, faster? Which he one just was in more pain? Stuff. Uh, and then, so he, he got this, this great idea. So there was an elephant named Topsy. Uh, I believe it was born like in 18, 1885, mm -hmm. I want to say, and it was a circus elephant. Uh, it grew bigger than they wanted it to grow though, as elephants tend to do. And it <laughs> killed three people in the circus, <laughs> like three circus workers. <laughs> so dude, the 1800s were fucking insane. So what, the, what they decided to do instead of you mainly putting down this, this elephant or like, I don't know, releasing it to the wild, doing fucking anything. Uh -oh. They decided to go to Coney Island of all fucking places and build a giant gallow so they could hang the elephant for everyone what? to watch. What? Like, this is a they real hung that bastard? <laughs> this is a real fucking thing. What, they have so like no, a titanium so rope? So How do you do that? So they were gonna hang the elephant. There was literally gallows built and everything for Topsy the elephant. And what? instead, uh, I believe, what is what is the animal thing? Uh, not PETA, S SPCA, is that it? ASPCA. I don't, I don't know. ASPCA, uh, yeah, whatever the fuck it is. Um, but they stepped in and were like, hey, you, you can't you can't hang an elephant. Um, <laughs> so that's you're not God, that's pretty, ASPCA, that's pretty valid. But then Mr. Edison was like, boy, have I got the fucking I'm cooking. I know what oh, I'm doing man. here. He made it essentially. I'll kill you, elephant. I got uh, you. Yeah, he essentially made it <laughs> copper sandals. And he connected the elephant up to AC power. 
Oh, and and no. he burned the elephant to death in front of <laughs> in front shit. of a lot of people. But then he's smart. He recycled. He sold all the burnt legs as umbrella holders. So it's okay. They were hollowed out. This and then is not sold. a real story. This, this is, is a genuine <laughs> fucking thing. This sounds like one of your dreams happened. that you woke up and just wrote right. down your notes. Right? Is a genuine up. fucking thing? It is That's all insane. If you there, you probably won't be able to see it from from there. But there's a book, Strange Glow. Uh, the whole book's about um, nuclear energy and stuff like that. Um, that's that's where I, I started reading it, and obviously light being a form of radiation, uh, it talks about you know the beginnings of light and stuff like that. But yeah, so that that was that was that was what Thomas Edison was up to. Um, that's bananas, you know, selling legs and stuff like that of elephants. And, <laughs> yeah, that it was uh, insane. He also like backfired strongly. So after he made all these videos about like how deadly AC power was, not only were people really obviously upset that he was making videos killing animals with AC power, but then the government actually took note and they're like, wow, AC power is like extremely useful for killing things. Let's make an electric chair using that. So then uh, Westinghouse got a contract to make make the, the electric chair and, and Edison did not. <laughs> So it like double backfired. So everyone hated him, and then he lost, he he lost a government check because of it. Damn. Yeah, he was uh he was a weird dude. Isn't there something uh, related to Nikola Tesla and Edison? Uh yeah. So uh Tesla actually worked for Edison for a little bit. Um obviously they you know that fell out pretty quickly given how Edison was like extremely stubborn. So he was like, if we did not have uh, Westinghouse, then power lines would probably be underground. That's what. Edison wanted, he really wanted to do power lines under the ground. And then Weston House did like the standard one. You look outside and there's a telephone pole and mm -hmm. you know, all the wires on that. Um, but, it, you know, he was literally putting himself in like financial ruin to make his company keep doing that. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. And then his uh, his research assistant. So there was a thing back in the early 1900s, late 1800s called a crook's tube. Uh, essentially, it's a glorified uh, light bulb. But a, who was it? Was it, I can't remember who it was that actually discovered it. Um, but somebody discovered that if you put a shit ton of power through it, uh, essentially that's, that's how you get x-rays. Um, the, mm. the energy that does escape it is x-rays. If you have something fluorescent, it will, it will mm. glow and that's how you get x-rays, whatever. Um, Edison used a Crookes tube and he came up with a, uh, invention, I believe it's called the fluoroscope. I'm not sure the pronunciation of it. Uh, but it was the first time you could actually see like live x-rays of something. It was essentially a box, crook's tube on one end, and then you could kind of like look through it and you could put body parts in and move them around and you could see it live. Like you, you, you could watch their hand move and stuff like that x-rays. Huh. Um, so whenever crazy. he wanted to show people this, uh, again, nobody believed, uh, you know, x-rays were harmful back then. And the people, even though there was like clear evidence, you know, kind of kind of kind of you know still ties into a lot of modern things but anyway um hmm. some things have a change uh, yeah but uh every time he wanted to demonstrate his uh his little fluoroscope he had his assistant put his hands in and x-ray his hands and this dude would get his hands x-rayed constantly so he would develop radiation burns on one hand so he'd switch to his other hand while the, the other one healed and then he'd go back and forth just switching his hands that were getting burned. And again, he, he didn't really understand. Um, there was a lot of people who believed that it was it was the electric generators that were burning people's hands and not the fact that it's, you know, radiation, radiation. being yeah. Yeah, yeah. Being, being put onto you. But uh so eventually <laughs> his uh his his uh research assistant, he he had to get his <clears throat> fingers removed. And then they were like, yeah, no, cancer's still going. So they took his hands off, both his hands. And they were like, ah, you know, we should probably do the arms just to be safe. So they took both his arms off. So he just looked like a fucking exclamation mark. And then he died of cancer anyway. So Damn. Just, oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, it was just thing after thing for that guy. And then, uh... <laughs> Yeah, they uh, they tried to ask Edison about it, like to try to you know what what you know what was what was it like working with X rays and what have you learned from it? And he just said, "Do not ask me ask me anything about X rays. They are scary." And that was it. That was all he had to say about his his research assistant falling apart essentially. <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, if you want to read about any of that, it's in Strange Glow. It's a good book. Highly recommend picking up. That's like the first chapter, like. You can spend 20 minutes just reading that and you'll learn, like that book is fucking insane. 
Um, but yeah, stuff like that is what I'm going to be, what I'm going to be talking about. Obviously it'll be a lot more formatted and, um, I am sourcing everything because misinformation is absolutely rampant in the world we live in. I do not want to be, yeah, I do not want to be a part of the, the flat earth, you know, autism vaccine (laughs) type beat. Uh, it's way more fun. So I definitely, uh, that's probably taking some of the longest is like fact checking everything. Like in the sleep book I had, um, there's just random little things that are just slightly incorrect about it or like, you know, outdated. So there was, it's stupid shit. Like one of the things I had to correct was in the book, it says squirrels sleep for, uh, 15.9 hours on average. The reality is I sleep 14.9. So it's just like little shit like that is, it doesn't sound like much, but if you're, if that you know, got out, oh my God, if it doesn't sound like much, but it, like, <laughs> discredit if, your if, entire if, you're, channel. if you're talking, if you're talking to people who are experts in those fields, or anybody right. who's even like educated on it you now yeah. go oh yeah no i know squirrels sleep 15.9 hours and they're like okay well Wait a second. you know he's wrong about that so what you know this guy's just talking bullshit about a bunch of yeah. other stuff um so it's it's more so about credibility than it is the actual content that you're correct or incorrect on yeah um yeah. but yeah so so i got i got a video on sleep i'm working on uh radiation in general and then edison and I'll probably do some fun CIA stuff because those are always crazy. Ooh. Are you eventually going to tap um, into like a world of like conspiracy theories and stuff? Yes and no. Um, only confirmed ones. I don't think I'll ever do anything like, you know, 9-11 was an inside job, like stuff like that. Uh, it's not really the audience I want to attract. Yeah, I'm more fair. interested in people who are, you know, people who want to learn about like confirmed genuine things that are happening in this world. Like I'll do a, space is my main thing but space like especially you know uh when it gets into some crazy like particle physics theoretical physics quantum physics like stuff like that it takes so much sourcing so much learning so much like energy to actually understand a talk because you can you can like give facts about something but if you don't understand it properly you yourself cannot teach somebody else about it right like right you know you can you can fake your way through like a conversation but if you're actually putting yourself out on the internet uh, where people can actively fact check and actively, you know, go watch somebody who's smarter than you talk about it. You have to really be on the ball about what you're doing. So I'll probably get more in depth, the more comfortable I get. Um, but there's enough like, you know, things that we know and things that have been proven where I don't really feel like I have to go into conspiracy theories. Like if you just want to talk about crazy shit, CIA's done, like what is the, what I forget what the one is called. I haven't researched it at all. I remember watching it from a uh, video from a guy named necessary information where they literally, the CIA literally cucked dudes for like months on end, just watching people have sex with prostitutes. And they would like get really fucking high on acid and watch people have sex with prostitutes. Like this was, this was just a thing they were doing. Yeah, they just like they'd spike each other's coffee with like LSD and then just watch, you know, uh, undercover people have sex with prostitutes and or sorry, the prostitutes were hired and the other people were not. So they just yeah, it's just it's just like there's enough shit like that in the world where it's literally endless topics and I don't really need to dive into like conspiracy theories. So that's where yeah. I stand on that. Well, that's but, good. Yeah, you're going, not, you're going into it with an approach of wanting to make sure that everything's correct. Yeah, I mean you know obviously i will mess things up um i'm yeah, sure somebody will fact check everything i just said in that story um about edison and i'm sure there'll be little bits and bobs here and there obviously i've not written a script for that one yet i don't actually you know i haven't right. taken the time to memorize these things but even though i will be doing that i'm sure there'll be little things here and there that can be nitpicked and you know i want to limit those as much as possible but yeah i'm excited well, i'm uh, intrigued just listening to what you I am uh, also excited. sampled us with yeah i mean i feel like before youtube i used to actually be you know not uh, not smart i'm not smart at all i am uh, average intelligence as 99.9 percent of us watching this are but like you just thrive know, for you knowledge can, but uh, that's not like something that has to be you know gatekeeped by like the intellectual elite anybody can learn random shit right like right it takes it takes a smart person to tell you how a black hole works right um it does not take a smart person to get a dumbed down version of that to be able to you know uh learn it and learn about you know the world we're in and the universe we're in and there's just there's just so much shit you can learn you don't have to be intelligent you just you can just be educated and i feel like before youtube i actually used to be quite you know academically experienced we'll say Mm. um yes youtube has definitely um (laughs) rotted my brain i used to be 
<laughs> very interested in learning in school, and I was I was really good at school, and and all that. And now I'm just like, if you put a book in front of me, I'm like, a. Dude. B. Yeah, I, feel, I feel a cognitive decline <laughs> after after several years of YouTube. I feel like when I first started doing YouTube, I feel like I could retain anything and just be like normal. And after Dude, having a job how... of just gaming and stupidity for so long, I'm just well. They say that Dude. like doing music and studying music is really good for your brain, which like I guess maybe it is for yeah. me. But like in terms of uh, academic <laughs> shit, you I feel yeah. like you have to stay within that realm specifically because that has definitely slipped a little bit for me. Dude, you should have seen the first time I like actually went to go write down like, like I said. So my process for this is, I, I right now I'm sticking to physical books more than the internet because the internet you look up one thing, and you get 15 different answers for yeah, it. Yeah, especially like Google um, AI so, shit bullshit. Yeah. So right now shit. my right now my main sources for everything has been Wikipedia, you know, books. <laughs> no, <laughs> has been books. So I've been taking stuff and rather than just reading. A book and then you know you read through the whole thing maybe you'll pick up like you know 15 20 things out of the book and you'll you'll remember those uh, i'm trying to make a conscious effort to actually memorize everything that's going on um and to learn about it uh i started it with the sleep book and i, I feel like i've memorized most of the you know first like five chapters and i would just write stuff down every time i came up with something even remotely interesting i would just bullet form or write the page down so i can go back and learn it but dude the first time i picked up a pencil to actually write and like write a full sentence, I was like, "What the <laughs> fuck?" Like I have not done this since high like, school. <laughs> Where's the period go? I, it felt like a it felt like a foreign object. I, I did it in college, mm -hmm. which was like what six years ago or five years ago, and yeah. I was just bewildered at how difficult it was. I've always been a terrible writer. Like I, I, I my writing is so unbelievably messy, and that has not only gotten worse, but like I'll go to write a word that I type out every day, but actually writing it, I'm like sitting there, I'm like. Because, 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 <laughs> dude, like, auto like, auto like filling words is like has like destroyed my brain with that kind but of. But it's shit. not even that. It's literally like I type this word out every day on my like on my fucking PC where there's no like correcting it, or anything. Like, mm. I just I'm just so used to typing it like that's how you spell because it's on the screen. It's written in front of me. Yeah. But then when he like hand me a pencil, uh -huh. I'm like, dude, it's like monkey. your muscle memory like died a long time ago. Yeah, literally. Yeah, literally. Just had no idea what was going on. Um. But yeah, it's been it's been fun to delve back into it. It's I've been reading for at least like I I do a minimum of one hour a day. So, mm, however, really whenever healthy. that comes, if it's if it's thirty minutes uh, in the morning, thirty minutes at night, whatever it is, but I make sure I do an hour of uh, essentially studying per day. Yeah. So I feel like uh, Ty Lopez. I'm just gonna have my garage with my fucking Lamborghini and <laughs> my big bookshelf. Knowledge, <laughs> knowledge, oh, knowledge. Yeah. I will never read an investor book though, so I won't quite be Ty Lopez. Ah, that's all right. That's you don't need all for that. the best. Yeah, you don't need yeah. all that. Nah, you don't need any of that. But yeah, it's been uh, it's been fun. I'm really excited to actually do the channel, and uh, I'll send you guys a video obviously when when I have them. Yes, please. Sorted. But well, they're, uh, they're a lot of work. I well, mean, I'm I bet, sure McNasty dude. understands with you know his long ass fucking video on Soma, and then honestly, even you with like Omegle, it is a lot more work than a standard gaming video. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. So it's yeah. like, so that like cognitive dissonance of like what it, the amount of workload it feels like to go make a video is just being completely. Yeah, but when you, know, you finally fucked. have it done, oh think... man, the satisfaction, the feeling. Oh yeah, I'm of, excited. Just, oh my god, it's finally done. I yeah, think no, the longest excited. time I've ever spent on a video was it's either between a video where I did 50 memes in one video, which I did a long time ago. <laughs> mm. well, um, I remember that. 50 meme songs that took yeah. a long Wasn't time. Wasn't that like when you first with... got that seven string? It was. Yeah, I yeah. remember that video. Yeah, it, just like organizing that and like putting the songs in an order that like flowed well and like I yeah. shot most of it in real life, like out in places and shit, which I had never done before. Hmm. I also did a video once where I played each note on the guitar once oh. and then I edited oh, a whole song out of just that. That, that took, oh. that, that was dude. probably like a hundred hours at least. There's no that way took that forever. was worth, right? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sounded cool in the end, but holy shit, it was it was a lot of uh, listening to uh, clean guitar tone note eighty five over and over again. Oh, so that's brutal. Um, speaking of Soma video, McNasty, when's uh, when are you uploading that channel again? I don't know. 
I feel like I kind of like it. It's it's one of those things where it's like it's a passion, but then at the same time, it's like I don't always feel like I want to work on those types of videos. Like mm -hmm. it's just a lot of a lot of effort. Like my next video was gonna be uh was gonna be on the Truman Show, and I oh yeah, yeah I would have to that. watch that movie three times in a row to like really go through with a fine tooth yeah. comb and pick out everything and it's just uh yeah, i mean you literally basically have to do what i do with the book where you sit there and take notes essentially of everything that's like inter interesting or that you want to springboard off of into another topic right yeah because if i i mean the thing about doing stuff like that is you want to you kind of want to cover all grounds you don't want to just make like a oh truman was played by jim carrey you know, just like basic <laughs> stupid information doesn't matter <laughs> like people, plot, people watch that kind of stuff and they're interested in like lore they're interested in things that they wouldn't normally they pick missed. up by watching it or playing it or yeah. Just like, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the basic thing I did with Soma. I really like, I feel like I read every Bro, single word on played, the Soma I've wiki. I've never even played, I've not played Soma and I feel like I know everything there is to know about Soma. Pretty much. Yeah. Of that <laughs> yeah you, you, you covered it really well. Yeah. Yeah. Like and, I don't even uh, need to play the game. Yeah. So I, and the thing is too, is like I try to, I, I have like an idea of wanting to go for things that are more philosophical because then you have like, then you can kind of incorporate your own opinion yeah, you can be more subjective, right? Yeah, and then you can ask questions. You know, you can ask, like, mm -hmm. people want, like, on the Soma video, there's so many comments, because people, people, like, they want to give their own interpretation of, like, what, mm -hmm. you know, what life really means and stuff like that. So, and that's yeah. kind of how Truman Show is. Like, Truman Show, you're put in a situation where you're just, he's just being controlled his entire life and doesn't yeah. even know it. So, it's like, you can ask, like, well, like, how would you feel if you were in this situation and found out, like, so it's just stuff like that. But the pro the thing is, is like, it just takes a long time to make those videos. And yeah, you also like, because it is a passion project and obviously it's not something that will like pay your mortgage for you. Yeah. Um, it yeah. is also kind of hard to justify spending hours on mm. hours on hours on it. Yeah. But I mean, if those videos did pop off though, I mean, your Soma one did great. Uh, yeah, it did pretty good for a first those... time video on a channel. I remember for a yeah. little bit, it did kind of like, I was like, mm -hmm. eh. It wasn't doing like super great, and then it just pfft, just the fucking went way up. Yeah. I don't know. It recommended that like crazy video, yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Long but, videos um, are always like that because people look at it and they're like, "Fuck, hour long." Like I'm not watching this shit, and then you know, yeah. six months later, it'll pop up and they recommend it, and they're like, "Fuck it, I'm not doing anything." <laughs> yeah, true. But just uh, yeah, it's like you said, you got to kind of pay a lot more attention to stuff that's you know mm -hmm. paying for you to live. <laughs> yeah. Or something yeah, and that's... you have to. You obviously have to wait as well for like the inspiration to hit for it too. Yeah. Um, like if I, because if if I sat just... down and made that Soma video, I could have finished in like a month, but I didn't. Yeah. I would definitely. have not turned out the way I wanted it. It would have just, I felt no. like I would have ended up rushing it. And that's the last thing I want to do, which I kind of did a yeah. little bit towards the end of the video. Like I, I noticed my script like the first, cause I sectioned it in eight different parts. First mm -hmm. part, definitely like double the length of the last part. So it just kind of got yeah, to a point I mean, where I was like, fair. but that's also like, you being tired of doing it is also potentially how the audience is going to feel after hearing it. So like a lot of times when we go into like script writing with, with too much energy, a lot of it will be like almost convoluted where you kind of, you know, repeat similar things over and over similar, maybe not subjects, but yeah. general topics and things like that. Uh, so sometimes it's okay to rush it a little bit because it, it gets to the point more, especially with t people's little like TikTok brains. Yeah. Um, it's not so much a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, I guess you're right, because nobody wants to hear the fucking same thing eight times during a video. Yeah. Um, but my my method was chunking it out in different parts, because I streamed it. I, I streamed it three times. The first time was two hours, the second time was two hours, and the third time was four hours. So I figured I would just go, like, every hour and just kind of talk about what's happening in that hour. And then mm -hmm. I feel like that kind of kept me from repeating things because I'm just kind of going like, like I would go back yeah. to things like to relate to the newer thing. Like, oh, I don't know if, yeah, if yeah, you remember. Yeah, I mean, you reference the, it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that kept me from like repeating a bunch of random crap. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I like that what you said about like the subjectivity thing of like you throwing in your own personal opinion because that makes it a lot more like interesting or being philosophical with it like putting it back on the viewers to, you know, to use their little noggins. Yeah. Um, get them more interested and stay interested. Cause I, it's really funny because that's literally the exact same thing I was thinking for mine. Um, how it's kind of harder to do with, 
you know, when you go the science route and stuff like that. Because it's all just subjective. Yeah, but then, well, no, it's all objective. It's it's the oh, opposite, yeah. I, right? I said Where, that kind of way. It's all yeah, no, no. just objective. <laughs> yeah, it's all just mm. objective. So, like, there's very little room for personal opinion on stuff. Yeah. But you can, that's where you can kind of have fun and, like, go find, like, theories that aren't fully uh, hashed out yet. Yeah. Um, so for something like the black hole, you can go find like the information loss, you know, paradox, stuff like that. Um, or in the case of the sleep one, there was a really cool theory that was thrown out there and doesn't really have any backing, but it allows for people sleep to like theory. use their imagination. Uh, no, <laughs> no, definitely not sleep <laughs> theory. But uh, so because just because of the history of sleep and how every single living being uh, sleeps even single-celled organisms despite the fact that it's not exactly like a sleep cycle like they don't have NREM and REM and stuff like that they go through phases of uh, alertness and less alertness and it's directly correlated with a uh, time of day uh, so given that fact there's people that were like okay well if even single-cell organisms have this which is what we've you know we eventually evolved from mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people ask the question of like why do we sleep but they might be phrasing that completely wrong where sleep might have been the state that all living beings were in normally and that we evolved into awakeness. Right. So like you can throw a theory like that. That's like, where what do you think about mind that? virus came from. Yeah. That's where it came from. That's Audience. what Elon Musk is talking about. He knows. Um, he yeah. Like just coming up with something like that, that's not hashed out and is simply a question that's been thrown out there that has no real answer because right. you know, we don't know. Uh, just throwing that at your audience is just, just fun. There's so many things like that, that I just, allow for people to use their own brain and come up with their own fun little theories, despite the fact that, you know, realistically, none of them will have any, any merit to them whatsoever, but it's just fun to think about. Yeah. It's, it's very much cool. like more satisfying to have something where you're kind of having your fans, like being more interactive in the video instead of just yeah sitting there soaking in information, talking. like you're giving a lecture or yeah. something talking at them. Yeah. yeah. Comment spaghetti or meat. Yeah. Just yeah, do comment that. something of substance. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, definitely more satisfying uh, than just funny moment video number five hundred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, which it still is. fucking I mean, fun. Love. Oh no, no, dude. Gaming is like yeah. I will my never not love that. Like if I no, if I if I if this channel, I don't likely see it happening. But say this this channel pop the fuck off. I don't think I would ever actually stop gaming with my friends and yeah, me neither. You know, recording mm -hmm. it and uploading it because people just genuinely love that stuff. Like. I pro I'd stop doing sponsors and other like annoying things on it. Um, but I can't see it ever being something I don't want to do. That shit is just way too much fun, man. It's literally what we would do when we're kids. It's just now we're getting paid for it. It's the right. coolest job in the world. Yeah, I'm literally it's so hard doing to the same shit I did 10 years ago. It's just now money shows up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now just every month somebody pays my bills to, to keep doing it. <laughs> just it's be just a dumbass insane. online. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. I also think it's important yeah, so too to have like, have some kind of separate creative outlet because it's like the gaming stuff is fun but it's not like you know you're not like making art or like no expressing your like your inner passions and stuff you're just making jokes and being dumb but it's just good yeah, to have that I mean, like so because my my kind of like dream like in the future for youtube is i eventually obviously want to do a face reveal and then i kind of want to like delve into like the commentary side of youtube 85 percent clear right now <laughs> hey uh, yeah um i i eventually want to get into like a commentary youtube because i'm for just i'm always like really dude you want to do that forever yeah i i very much like the way uh Umpaville did his stuff like he he used to be like us well it was more of like let's mm -hmm. play shit yeah and then he kind of like started drifting into like um meme reviews type stuff like when that mm -hmm. was really popular and then that kind of like got him a bigger audience of people that just want to watch him talk about shit you know now he's yeah. now he's like a huge like like a big drama channel which mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't necessarily if i want to get like super into that like i don't want to just like oh a new pedophile no, like i'm gonna sit here and talk about mean, it for mm. the next five weeks <laughs> new pedophile yeah. to drop no that's <laughs> uh if you're if you're not like fully okay and understanding you know what you're doing with that you can just end up becoming part of the brain rot like yeah, yeah, no, I would definitely at, want to go the route you're like going. Keemstar, bro. Like, I want to, I want to source my shit. I don't want to fucking, 
I don't want to just like be like, oh, I saw this on Twitter, so I'm gonna sit here and talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I just mean like the <sighs> the drama, like dealing with doing any commentary based on drama. Oh, you yeah. have to be like in the middle of something. You're eating dinner. You see, you know, Ava talking to a minor. You gotta fucking you get rid of your dinner. You <laughs> run to your office. You make a script. Yeah. You talk it over. You sit there and you research stuff. Hope you got it all right because this came out ten minutes ago and you need to get it up. Yeah, you gotta the, be first, like, baby. You like, gotta be it's first. Just, eh, that sounds yeah. miserable. Like at least like this, like, you know, or what you're going into. It's, it's so much like past information that you're just putting your own spin on while still staying objective and still, you know, yeah, talking about things that aren't going to exactly change. Um, it's just, it's just a lot healthier. I feel like a lot healthier I, oh, relationship yeah. with the internet. My, my kind of like main thing that I like is, um, like the kind of style of uh, yeah, uh Curtis Connor. Mm. I don't know if you guys know Curtis Connor. He does like um like he did a recent video where it was like why did conspiracy theories get so much more crazy than like old ones? Like now people yeah think that like Lil Wayne is literally a goat person. <laughs> That's like a conspiracy. Prove me yeah. wrong right now. <laughs> And just like I've seen him, I, I've seen him grazing on my front lawn once or twice before. <laughs> it's just like things like that. That's not really like it's not like a hot topic currently. It's just kind of like like what the fuck? Like he just come made up, up his conclusion? own topic and then was like, I'm just gonna like follow this and you know just stuff like that or like or like kind of well I guess like Cody Co would kind of be brain rot like not really talking well, about like him and Tana but um it's just like the kind of content he makes. Isn't that like, a, isn't that another outed one recently? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Apparently, Jesus, they've been talking about that for a long time, but only recently, like the big channels eventually caught on, and then that kind of like helped it spread. But she's been wow. talking about that for like a few years now. She's Tana has, yeah, on podcasts and stuff. It's just nobody really started talking about it until recently. Jesus, but uh, just like his style of content, where he watches <laughs> like you know, like a fucking BuzzFeed video and like makes jokes on, because it's very like lighthearted the way he does his content. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I just uh, I just kind of want to stay away from the intense drama. I know Oompa likes to do videos on stuff like that, but he's he's a lot more informative, but then kind of also silly. And he also he's yeah. also like a couple times like fucked up. Like he'll 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 talk too quickly on a topic, and then like new evidence or information will come out that just completely yeah. like is like that topic was not actually true. But he'll usually come out and like make like an apology video or something. That's good. I mean, I love him, but I think Umba's oh, me too. Definitely one Such of one of, definitely one of the good ones. Yeah, correct. You know, on this platform. Um, but yeah, there's dude. YouTube is so cool. Like, there's actually just infinite places you can go. Like, people still DM me all the time and are like, "Oh, you know, is it too late? Do you think to start a YouTube channel and do this?" And I get stuff? those it's DMs like, too. Dude, nope. dude, literally never. Like, never. I, I mean, are you still watching YouTube? Then answer your own question. Like, if you are, if you are literally what your audience would be. Like, you're just some guy watching YouTube. That's, that's, that's yeah, that's, that's literally that's how we YouTube all started. Is. Like, we didn't, we didn't start YouTube, YouTube and not know what YouTube, YouTube was. We were right, all I didn't watching. Like, I didn't just find this. What the fuck is YouTube? Let me make an account. Like, yeah, we were all consumers. Yeah. No, and I mean, I feel like we. Well, maybe not you guys, because you guys were a bit earlier than me. But I, I feel like I came out during like the equivalent of the Cambrian explosion of YouTube, like gaming where every single person and their fucking uncle was making a gaming channel. Yeah. And like, you know, if yeah. mine got somewhere, I, I promise I don't have anything in me that you do not have to get to the same position. <laughs> no. uh, so it's, there's no like market that's too crowded. I mean, you see new gamers pop up and you know, all the time you see new, whatever, any sort of content. Uh, there's, there's so many people watching that it's just impossible to have too many creators in something. Like it's just not mm-hmm. real. But, yeah. It yeah, does it so. does take a little bit of luck though. It uh always. Oh, of you course. You could There's, be the most you know. talented, funniest, greatest gamer ever. Yeah. And if the algorithm doesn't bless you little cock and taters, then mm-hmm. you know, it may not blow up. But Yeah. The only yeah, thing you know for uh, sure is if you consistently too. do your good shit, that's your best bet. Yeah, that's, and yeah. try to grow. That's all, that's all you can really do. Try to grow with your like, you know, your editing and stuff too. Don't just uh, don't get stagnant. Don't like get comfortable yeah. too soon. You know, like if I can't even like. Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, looking back on like my oldest oldest videos, like just literally all I would do is just put up like 
subtitles and they were so poorly done the cuts were so done and then eventually you just you keep doing it and then you get inspiration from the youtubers that you like and you start like figuring out ways to kind of like go in the same route they're going and then you just yeah uh, i mean nobody's going to be a better fits than fits is exactly so don't try to be like fits right. but take things that you love about fits that you can put into your own personality right it's pretty much that's, what i did you know, with siege important thing. i kind of yeah. just uh took like his format and then brought it to a new game where there kind of wasn't mean, really any i mean maybe fits wasn't the best example because his ass barely uploads anymore but you you get the gist <laughs> yeah. of it right <laughs> um then another thing too that i see uh I guess since we're talking about YouTube and growing and stuff like that, I get so many people that are just like, oh, bro, I have a channel with like 500 subs. Like, will you play with me? Yada, yada. I feel like you'd be a huge boost. Bro, those are not, that's not going to work for you. That's the wrong yeah. The thing is like, you want to grow with a group of friends and you want a community around that friends. If you just go play like with whatever, fucking Vanoss Gaming tomorrow and you have a channel with 500 <laughs> subs, you will wake up and your channel will probably be at 1,000, 1,500 subs. But those people don't actually, they're not going to watch your fucking content. They never subbed for your content. They, they literally subscribed just because you were in this other guy's video. That's not really how growth works. You, you might get subs, but you won't get views. You'll have, yeah. you know, a channel with a uh, fucking million subscribers and you're getting 20K views. Uh, that's, that's the effect that, you know, trying to play with bigger people will get you is, you know, it might look good on paper, but the reality is you're not even growing your own community. And then if this person stops uploading, and you know or you're not part of their content anymore you've now just lost you know every bit of your viewer base where you know if you build a community with you know what we've done with the goons what whatever i've done with you know smitty and dude's done with omegle and you know whatever else we do every single goon just split off and and we just didn't play with each other we would still have our community fine we don't yeah we'd all like we we would all you know it would it would suck we'd we'd definitely lose uh you know a portion of our audience each i'm sure there's people yeah, like who hardcore only dedicated watch... goons only fans yeah I mean, like... well there's people that there's people that only watch me here on the podcast and can't stand my regular content and i'm sure that's the same for yeah. you know everybody yeah. has something like that um so you'd lose a bit of that but yeah. like the reality is is we all have our own audiences and people who like and dislike each of us for different reasons and yada yada so it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be career ending if you've built a community with your friends rather than just like latching on to one that's already there and hoping that they accept you. Yeah. One work. thing I, that I've personally like back when, before I ever even did YouTube and I was a fan of like YouTubers is like, I would see like people that were in a group and there would just be like, obviously a hierarchy of like fame. Mm-hmm. And then like me personally, and I, I'm sure other people feel this way too. Like I would go and watch the other YouTubers in the main guy's video just to see a different perspective of that main famous guy. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I wasn't really there to watch mm. that person on their channel. I would just want to see more content of the more famous person, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just yeah. not good. Hey, like as a, a, as a YouTuber, a you don't want position. that. That's a, yeah, that's a bad position to be. I mean, you can look at, there's been so many different gaming groups that are like that. where like, you know, half of them are now doing nine to fives, not by choice. Mm-hmm. Uh, despite the fact that they have, you know, three fucking million subscribers. Right. But it was all because their their best buddy has, you know, 10 million or something. I'm not throwing one specific channel under the bus for the yeah. record before somebody's like, who is three million subscribers? That was just a random number. That was just a random number. But that like that whole point stands of just, you know, there's a lot of people like that where... Uh, they didn't actually build their own community and this channel just falls off. So long story short, do not go hunt out big YouTubers and ask them to play yeah. with you. Find go people hunt out that channels aren't... around your size and go, hey, let's do shit. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much Correct. Except for do. That's pretty much what we, we all did. What? Yeah. Well, you, you had already yeah, had your fame, little... dude, by the time we all yeah, met. Yeah, you were already a famous little boy. But uh, I, feel like yeah. the, well, the, I feel like the good thing about our group is we all individually like benefited each other's content. Like there wasn't really oh, well, for any sure. like, I mean, there wasn't really any like uh, people that were just kind of like mooching off each other's con. Like we were all like, <laughs> we all made great jokes. We all have our best moments and stuff. And yeah, personally, I feel like that's, what's best about our group. Yeah. Dude is insane. A guitar. McNasty's oh. got, got really good edgy jokes. I'm Brown. You know, we've all got our, <laughs> we've all got our positives. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. The thing is, too, is we're all kind of like different. Like, 
Like I'm fucking liberal Californian. You're brown. Do is guitar guy. Soup is like I identify redneck. as brown. <laughs> like I'm we, simply brown. And when we used to have Grizzy around, then we had the we had the black guy too. So it was you like say a good, that like he died. It was, <laughs> I can almost feel like I didn't even talk to him in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Texted him yesterday. <laughs> He's coming to my house in September. Oh, nice. Hell yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Just Hanging a visit. Or... Nelly Bean. Yeah. Yeah. Just coming to hang out. They uh, we always do a trip because I always see him in Texas. I always go to him. Mm-hmm. It's like, has he ever been to bring you Canada before? Yeah, yeah. He's come to Canada twice. Uh, he stayed at my house last year, Smitty's house the year before. And then I think he came one other time, but uh, he's not staying at my house again because Doug, Doug kept jumping on him, trying to sleep on him. I think I think Doug thinks that he's just like a big mattress <laughs> that walks around. So <laughs> Doug just wanted to Doug just wanted to sleep with him the whole time so he wouldn't leave him alone, kept meowing at him all night. That's so funny. Uh, <laughs> yep. Um, just a big mattress boy. I've been wanting to take a texas trip just uh it's a good time just never uh, i've never I met anybody texas. other than soup I'm the only person i've met in person and ethan and brandon i shouldn't say i hate texas i i, I don't know texas just is not for me the only reason i go is because of the people there yeah and because of the birthday cake at the restaurant called j prime if you are in ah, austin yes. texas and, and terry you Black's. want very good if you want oh terry box good too and you want very good uh steak followed by and birthday cake go to j prime that place fucks but uh <laughs> i've never like ate a steak nothing. and it was like you know what be good after this a fucking birthday Dude, cake slice <laughs> i it was crazy the first time it happened i ate a big ass ribeye then i had some little bit a little bit of way i literally had steak with a side of steak i we had some <laughs> some a5 miyazaki and just for the table and then we had i had my own ribeye and then I finished it all up. I'm like, oh, you know, I was good. Let me crush six white Russians. Feeling a little good. And then right as I thought, I'm full. I couldn't possibly eat anymore. The waitress walks by with this this giant plate of confetti birthday cake. Oh, and it's I confetti. Her and I, I stopped her and I said, where is that going? And she said, to this person's birthday. And I said, what if it's my birthday? And she said, then I'll get you confetti cake. And then I had confetti cake. So now every single time I go in there, despite the fact that I'm in there multiple times a year, I go, it's my birthday. And they go, okay, pal, we'll check get it you all. some birthday cake. <laughs> you go there like a month and a half, it's my birthday. Did they give me, yeah, well, literally, like, I mean, I went there like twice in two months, both times. And, and it's not like they don't know who we are. We fucking walk in with like 15 of us deep every time and get the, the back of the restaurant. So it's like, well, it's they know who we are. Birthday. You can't also, just order the birthday also, cake with money. Also, I don't. I don't know if you can. I don't know. I'm not doing that. I tell him it's my birthday. I don't know. Let's see that driver's license, boy. We can't just sell anyone this cake. But uh, and even a couple of the chefs there watch our content, and I'm pretty sure listen to our podcast. I think he said so. Uh, I'm so sure they're probably like happy they, to give you your birthday cake. Yeah, it's because it's not like they have no idea who we are. Like they, yeah, they they're just <laughs> fuck it birthday cake. Is um, it the one like yeah, the type dude, of cake so that has good. like 90 fucking layers of icing in it? uh it's uh, it yeah it's got yeah. a lot and it's all like rainbow colored um which is su- shocking for texas i'm surprised you know they're wow. okay with that uh <laughs> yeah, really but dude it it's just so good every time they put it in front of me somebody's like you're not gonna eat that whole thing and i eat the whole thing it's probably 1800 calories for that oh. cake. I eat the whole fucking thing dude it's insane i literally wake up in the middle of the night and i feel like god's punishing me like i just stabbing me over and over here i'm just like mm, belly full i'm good and i roll back <laughs> over and go to bed it's it's unreal bulking <laughs> diet of champions and birthday yeah, cake like and, and and rib eye. birthday yep. cake post steak see it sounds like a normal like sam solik breakfast though when he's on his cut the guy's <laughs> diet is actually just i i do you know which trend that <laughs> yeah. man has to be putting into his ass several Probably, like, like a lot. I hate to be morbid, but I wouldn't be surprised if I hear about him dying at like 28 or something. I don't think it'll be that early. At least he does a lot of blood work, from what I know, and he he sticks to his cardio, mm. um, which is genuinely important when you're on that much gear. Yeah. But like, do I see him living to 70? Probably not. No, he may be in like but, excruciating pain someday. But it's good that he keeps yeah. up with his blood work, though. I feel like that's. Probably yeah, but the that only most tells like thing you can half do. the story, right? Like, if your organs, yeah, well, doesn't trend expanded. like make your it makes your heart hard, doesn't it? Doesn't it like harden your so muscles in your heart? Um, it can, it can. I mean, it can do a lot of. I mean, tr- tests can do this as well. Um, Deca, like any any muscle building hormone. Um, the thing about them is like 
Yes, they will build your biceps, triceps, chest, quads, whatever you want. Uh, but it's it's not targeted, right? It's it's like a fucking napalm strike on your whole body. So yeah. it grows all muscles, which is, you know, heart, kidney, livers, uh, your fucking lung, like everything. Your whole mm-hmm. that's why you see like these guys with the uh that are on uh, HGH is why you see their massive Big guts, like their bubble guts. Oh yeah. It's just their insides are literally grown. Like they're lean, but they look fat because their insides are so fucking swollen permanently. Um, so yeah, I mean, it gets hard because it's muscle, right? When you have low fat, high muscle content, you get, you get something that's, that's solid. Yeah. Um, and a muscular heart is not exactly a, a healthy heart, an overly muscular heart. It's got to do extra work. Yeah. So, and even, you know, and even the extra muscle, it has to get more blood flow too. That's why every bodybuilder has like veins the size of like a New York, New York subway. Um, it's because yeah. the muscles obviously need more blood. So to pump more blood, the heart has to work harder. And it's also now at a disadvantage because it's, you know, it has all this uh, this gear in it. So it's just, it's like it's like a, a snowball effect, really. It's bad. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, my trainer is on gear, so I get to hear about all the fun, fun side effects of it. Mm. Yeah, not for me. I'll be, I'll be passing, personally. I will also be passing. <laughs> Stay natural. Yeah, maybe like... Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe in your early 40s, if you notice your test is going like below a healthy amount, you start doing TRT and stuff like that. But there's just no reason. And you're taking it at 23? Dude, no. There's just, even in your 40s, there's no reason. Yeah. Like, if it was extremely advantageous to have high test levels at any age, our bodies would have adapted to it. We wouldn't, you know. Right. Like, we, we, we wouldn't be built the way we are. Um, so obviously having good test levels, even when you're, you know, 40, 50 and stuff like that is, is extremely important. Being low test is just as dangerous as being high test, but it's just, yeah, it's all, it's, it's all cursed. The whole bodybuilding industry is so fucking bad. Well, it's of like course 23 it's like, year olds on gear. Yeah. It's just a bunch I mean, of body it's, dysmorphia. It's, it's kind of feel like that's mostly what it is. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's, yeah, it's I mean, become it's glorified. this hyper competitive thing where like you have to be negative body fat percentage year round you have to always be massively muscular to stand out you know it's very toxic yeah, yeah. but it's literally no worse than anorexia but it looks good on instagram so everyone's like hyping each other up like it is the only industry where drug abuse is like glorified paraded around yeah. yeah yeah like nobody says fuck yeah dude that heroin addict looks like he does a lot of heroin. That's <laughs> sick. But then yeah. you see, How, you know, can I talk to my doctor about hopping on heroin? Yeah. I want to be like that. Yeah. Like, like, and then you see somebody who's on a shit ton of trend. Like, you literally have people who have it in their fucking IG name, like the trend twins. Like, I don't mean to specifically <laughs> oh, yeah. call anybody out, but like, bro, what? No way. Yeah. That's like, what? What ridiculous. the fuck are you doing? Mm-hmm. That's insane. Uh, yeah, at least I mean, you're being honest anything, about it, though. I just—I was gonna say, if anything, they're less bad. The name—it's like just the it's fucking fucking somebody yeah. who's yeah, yeah, yeah who, who just to, lies about it. And you're like, mean, you'll be like me. Yeah, you can look yeah. like this naturally. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that guy's got abs like a turtle shell. He is not an addy. No, and he's beat red. <laughs> well, wasn't it like wasn't it like twelve thousand dollars a month he was spending on gear or something insane? It's it like was. That, yeah. What does twelve thousand dollars of gear look like? Like a normal bodybuilder probably spends like. 800 to 1200 max a month they must like, like back what? up a u-haul truck of needles i don't know <laughs> like i don't even <laughs> like know a, a trend vial and like a gatorade bottle like it's just a got, like massive a chug amounts. jug of trend yeah. <laughs> oh that shit is so gross i'm surprised that guy um, has lived as long as he's lived he looks like i mean on the he looks like he's about to just like implode on slush. himself or something when yeah. you have the money he has it helps because you have very like especially because he lives in the u.s obviously so if you are wealthy you have very good privatized health care health care yeah so he has you know very non-limited access to good doctors who you know probably know the amount of you know gear he's on and yeah. adjust his lifestyle that way but yeah he he probably will also not make it to a retirement home if i was if i was guessing <laughs> you are probably correct about what you are saying yes it's not worth <laughs> I'm it most, i'm most impressed that he still has hair Dude, that's yeah, what I don't get. A lot of hair, what too. You, I'm mad yeah. that a lot of bodybuilders that, like, inject, you know, fucking thousand milligrams of test a, a day have, not actually that much, obviously, but I still have a full hairline. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm natty and my hairline's fucking leaving. 
What is that all about? Genetics. That's fucked up. These people just have good genetics. It's, grandpa, it's, it's Papa Brown. Thanks, Dad. Yeah. It's all right. I got finasterided. It, I used to be like straight up bald. I don't know if you guys remember that. It was during COVID. Dude, my hairline is actually... I can I can post a, a picture of it in cancer for our editor to put. My hairline was so fucking far back. Like really? I, I literally had the... Was the it Widow's Peaking? Hold on. Let me... I can I can find it very quickly, but it, dude, it's fucked. <laughs> mm. It was so bad. You don't notice until you like. You don't notice it when you're just doing stuff, but then yeah. when you when you see yourself in like a picture, you're just like, yo, what? What do I look shit like that? Like my up shit, on you. dude, my my shit is clapped. <laughs> Hold on, I'm posting in cancer. You can see. Uh, you know how fucking thin it was. It didn't help that I was fat too, oh, so it yeah. just like looked worse because my head was more round. You kind of almost look like poop guy a little bit in that picture. That's fucked up. <laughs> That's really fucked up. <laughs> just the angle is really bad too. You can tell it's like kind of on like the. I mean, like to the, be fair, I was I was I was two hundred pounds and and bald, so that's you know, that's valid. I'll allow it. Oh yeah, your hairline looks a lot better now. Yeah, look at you now. Yeah. You look you look like younger too. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, losing 60 pounds and taking finasteride does that to a motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely helps, you know? <laughs> I mean, I feel like naturally having more body fat just makes you look older yeah. because typically people who are older carry more body fat. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that helped a little bit, but also the hair, severely the hair. <laughs> you were never really like bad. a hat guy, huh? Wait, were you? Were you a hat guy? No, I, I actually, it's hilarious. I wear hats now that my hairline is fine, but I didn't wear hats back then. But the mm. reason I didn't have to, the, I didn't have to wear hats back then because my hair never got messy or greasy because there wasn't fucking enough of it. It yeah. was just, it was unnoticeable uh, when it was. But now that I have more hair, uh, I can't leave the house half the time because I'm like, I've washed my hair for two days and it's fucking, it literally just looks like an Italian guy like licked it. That says <laughs> olive oil. Um, so now I'm a hat guy because sometimes I just don't feel like I'm like, a motherfucker just don't want to wash his hair every day. That's annoying and it's not, not great for your hair. So, so uh, yeah, now I'm a hat guy. Not when I was bald, weirdly. Should have been a hat guy. Yeah, it's back. kind of opposite, brother. Yeah, looking back, I probably should have been a hat guy because <laughs> that shit was clapped. Had looking the back cut. at me, had the, should have been the a hat Had the used car salesman type beat. If I had like a gold chain on. And looked oh, like yeah. that. Chest area. I could have sold you. I could have sold you a mean 1999 Mercedes E Class. Hell yeah! Cool name drop, dude. <laughs> what a, a Mercedes E Class. Yeah. The most mid tier Mercedes. I don't know anything about Mercedes because they all just have like just names that aren't like names. Oh yeah, I have a Mercedes 42 XE five six and a half. Bro, it's not that hard. It's 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 A class, B class, C class, E class, S class. That's too. I'm more of a Ram TRX kind of guy. It's just six letters. It's no different than like two names. Audi with like Toyota Camry, A4. I was just gonna say Honda Civic. Yep. BMW i6582. Okay, BMWs, I will say, is a little, a little Yeah, goofy. there's always numbers and letters and Like shit. the 318, the 335, whatever, three M3. Uh, there's a lot of different three things going on. Yeah. Doesn't it always Actually, have to do with Mercedes the shape of, like, the way the cylinders are laid out on the engine or something? No. So, I mean, it's Don't just, ask. it's lost. It's lost. <laughs> it's lost. It's actual. <laughs> so fucking toxic. <laughs> it's lost its actual, like, original meaning. Um but the M3 is just example a, a mid-size sedan, where the M5 is a full-size sedan, and then oh. the M8 is a grand coupe. Like it just gets bigger and bigger cars as a lineup. But like mm. you know, the BMW's naming sake has nothing to do with their engines because most of their engines are six cylinders in a row, hmm. rather than like an actual V6. Mercedes uses a lot of straight sixes, so does Audi. Actually, no, Audi uses V6 still. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> relevant info. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I I will not be with that. I don't know if that was any was, better. Anyway, um, has it been an hour? Do you guys want to keep yapping or are we good? I know he's sick, so I don't want to. I don't want to keep. Him I have long. COVID brain, but I can sit and yap. Dude does have COVID. Not that I've been I mean, yapping. I don't think I've. I don't think I've have said very much, but that's okay. You know what? You're here. You're here, and that's that's all we could have asked You're for. Here? Soup You're is, here. Uh, what is, what is soup doing? 
Did he say? Is he back on tour or something? What's he doing? No, he said he was done with touring. I don't know. Maybe he's like streaming or something. I have no idea. I don't know. He said he was gone for like (laughs) the next like six days. So damn. Oh, Soup is still alive. He is. He's fine. Or is it five days? I don't know. Oh, yeah. He's doing shit with uh, the Ethan. I think. I don't know exactly what. Fair enough. Well, Soup is still alive and well. He has not left the goons. I know he's been uh, spotty attendance lately. He's a busy um, man. Busy man. Yeah, these days. he was. He was touring. He was having fun. He's living life, and we're we're happy for him. And he's leaving the podcast for it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to stir up a little drama. People do it anyway. If somebody hasn't been here <laughs> for two soup. weeks, they're like, they're like, oh, there's beef. We don't like soup anymore. None of us. I like actually, yeah, I'm more of a salad dude, guy I actually now. think if it, I actually think if one member left this podcast, I I think we would just disband. Disband. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know. Either that, or just I... have to have like a guest. A lot, a lot more guests on. Yeah. It depends what the reason was, actually. Yeah. <laughs> like if Soup just left to go tour, then I, I, I think I'd be down to do the podcast. But if we had like beef, and there's just like a falling out with one of the members, I do not think I'd partake in the podcast anymore. Yeah, it'd, it'd be, be very like a uh, awkward, like awkward, elephant in the room yeah. type thing. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't got to talk about and it. The, every like, single podcast after be like, issue, you gonna yeah. talk about what happened between yeah. Nasty and Soup. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you play with... I mean, bro, I get that with fucking Grizzy. Because Grizzy focuses on a lot more solo content now. Or, like, you know, whatever his content is. Like, it's just... People immediately are like, wow, they have beef. Like, it sucks that they're not friends anymore. They've been friends for so long. It's like, bro, I fucking texted him an hour ago. What are you you (laughs) yapping about? He's, He's showing me beats. Like, it's... What the fuck are you talking about, man? I hate that shit. I cannot stand it. It's so annoying. People thrive on drama. Yeah. It's like they want their... Like, why would you want someone to have you're, beef with somebody? Yeah, like, you're, you're your YouTube group to have issues. Like, your your comfort group. Why would you want them to be yeah. scrapping? We would have issues that would have happened from... several years ago. Like, you just think in year eight of knowing each other, we're just going to have fucking massive issues. The biggest I mean, issue yeah, we, we have... have is that McNasty doesn't know when Wednesday is. That's our biggest issue. Bro. <laughs> Don't even get me fucking going. How many right, years has this podcast been okay, going? Okay, so here we, we will out. actually break You don't know what day bit. Wednesday is. Hear me out just a little bit. I, I went to the beach uh, over the weekend. Oh, well, never mind. You're I, went right. to, I went to the beach Bro, over the weekend. Also, and I for couldn't the viewers sleep for that shit. Wanna know, for the viewers that want to know how easy this career is and how free you are, <laughs> I said, who wants to record tonight? Uh, McNasty said... I went to the beach today. I'm too tired to record. <laughs> what? Bro, what? <laughs> when did I say that? Oh, was it Saturday, Friday? I don't know. You want me oh, to go I couldn't, I couldn't record while I was out of town. You said, just got home from the beach, too tired to record. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, my before you cut me off, you fucking fucker, I went to the beach, and I stayed in an Airbnb, and the bed was very uncomfortable. And I could not sleep. Because it's not as liquid, cooled horse shit. Imagine, On Sunday, okay, so I, imagine I didn't you call your boss, your boss and go, hey, boss, I slept bad. You know, was Who's my boss? Beach? Are you my boss? Us. Us. Oh, I thought you said call your boss. <laughs> he did. <sighs> We're your boss. Oh. He did say call your boss. <laughs> oh, I Carry confusion. on. Anyways, so on Sunday, uh, I literally did not sleep. Like the whole day, I went like a whole like twenty four plus hours without sleeping. So by the time I got home at like noon, I hadn't slept yet. I wasn't gonna record off fucking zero hours of sleep in a day. And then when I finally fell asleep, I only slept for like five hours. And then I was up for fucking six more Tried hours, it. and then I went back to bed for four more. So I was just like, like the, I was trying oh, to catch up on you sleep. Got a full night sleep. I was trying yeah. to catch up on sleep, and I just couldn't. Uh, and then I didn't until. Wednesday was the day where I caught up on my sleep. But by that time, I didn't realize it was Wednesday. I thought it was still Tuesday, just from my sleep being all sporadic. But I have a weekly alarm now on my phone, so. Should not happen well, again, my friend. Took us four years to get that alarm, <laughs> but we alarm. got it. Alarm, we got it. <laughs> I usually don't, like, forget that it's Wednesday. That usually only happened to me a couple times, but. No, you usually sleep through a Wednesday, which is arguably worse. It is actually That's astonishing true. how many times you've sent the DM, oh, shit, it's Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> it's been many of those <laughs> or like 7 p.m podcast has been done for two hours hey guys just woke up did you already do the podcast 
I don't know. Man. So this is our biggest problem, you know, really. There's no other beef. This is our beef. Up. This is our only beef. This is the this. I actually think this might be the only thing the goons have ever actually argued about. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Have we? I know. I've any? never done anything wrong. Blarg's no. never done anything wrong. It's usually always no. me. It's just McNasty. You guys always have to tell me to stop <laughs> doing something. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. It has actually only been us telling you to stop doing something. Actually, didn't I yell at Soup for something once? I feel like I got mad at Soup for something once. I think you got. I think you. I think you got mad at me once because I might have not communicated something well. But like that's about it. I don't know. We have a nice open door policy here at the Goons, and I like it because we, when we do have an issue, um we immediately bring it up with one another instead of talking shit behind each other's back. <laughs> we talk shit to each other's face. Yeah, and we fuck. go, hey, fix this, fix this, fix you it. stupid fucking gorilla. You useless piece of shit. This guy. We need to get this sorted. Uh, you know, I, I've been, I think Soup yelled at me before for something like that, so it's okay. It's all right. Everybody gets a little yelled at, but yeah, you're, you're, as you really As long as you're willing are, to but, fix but, the issue. I used to be yeah, pretty really stubborn the, back this, in the day. The sun that we revolve around of problematic yeah. instances. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you know what's funny is my my ex girlfriend is actually kind of the person who kind of like whipped that behavior out of me. Weird. I don't know why. I don't know why it was her that did that, but she I mean, kind of like she gave me an environment where like I could like be like like comfortably accept taking accountability for shit, and I feel like that kind of yeah. just like rewired my brain into like oh, that's a good thing I'm like wow like i can actually admit to my wrongdoings grow from them change and i don't wow. have to like there's no issues shout out yeah i mean that stubborn X. is is good but there there becomes a line where stubborn kind of turns into like self-destructive tendencies yeah i just couldn't take criticism of, back you know, then like when yeah. i was being criticized for something it was like well i would i would be very defensive i would come back well oh, you did this well, i can't do this but you can yeah do that. Like, deflecting right rather that than kind of mentality is just chin. toxic as balls and I hate that I used to be that way, but at least I've grown from it. It's all right. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally don't find that an issue. I mean, I literally yelled at you today because um, McNasty, yeah. you know, slept through yesterday and then was like, I'm going to be two hours late. And I said, you know, whatever, just please be more considerate of us. And immediately just, yeah, there was no excuse. So I think that's a, I think that's a marker of a grown man. Proud of you, sweetheart. Yes. Yeah. You're doing great. Yeah. Fuck. It's a very good thing. Listen, I'm just happy you're sleeping at least. Yeah, my uh, this week sleep has been a sleep fest up, for dude. me. It's pretty crazy how important sleep is for you. A lot of people don't uh, yeah. understand that. Yeah, I've made like, a whole gotta, video about it. I gotta sleep four hours a day so I can have more like, time to do nope. things. No, nope. like any celebrity that tells you that, where they're like, you only need, like The Rock, I think it was, Arnold Schwarzenegger, they're like, only sleep five hours a night. That's all you need. It's Well, it's not. It's yeah. just like actually objectively not. Humans need, you know, between the ideally you want eight to nine, but anywhere between like seven and nine is, is, uh, is really good. I always feel like I need 10. If I get like eight, sometimes I still feel like shit. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really like, it, it honestly is, is like a hundred percent. It's a hundred percent genetic based. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as well as even being like a night owl, early bird, stuff like that. It's not like you're lazy or something like that. It's actually just a genetic, genetic makeup that makes you that way. It's like 40% of people are early birds. Uh, 30% are kind of night owls. And then, uh, the remainder is uh, people who kind of fall in between. Well, yeah, I am my, a man of the night. My ID, I always my, ID my ID, my ideal schedule. I was saying ID for my ideal schedule is like 2 a.m. to like noon. Or like 2 or 3 a.m. to noon. Because like I kind of skip the okay. morning, but then I also have like a little bit of my late night to do. I mean, that, 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 that like kind of that that definitely creeps past like, you know, the... <laughs> the late side you'd want to wake up to like ideally have your circadian rhythm working the way it should but it's still fine yeah it's just noon's a little late but 2 a.m honestly it's 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 pretty doable as long as you're not doing like night shifts like the main thing you want is you're getting ample time of dark and ample time of light because obviously light is the main thing your brain uses to sync up your circadian rhythm mm -hmm. uh yeah. If not, it'll, you know, fall into, you know, things like using social structure and activity level. And yeah. even when you eat like stuff, it, eat stuff, that's when it'll kind of, you know, make that's up why, the rest uh, of you not looking at light. But sleeping on your phone fucks with your circadian rhythm because your brain is perceiving that you're getting light from yeah. that. 
Yeah, it um, uh, it definitely messes with a few things. I mean, light isn't like the only thing. So like, that's the reason why like blind people don't have insanely bad sleep schedules. Uh, circadian rhythm isn't actually just a nighttime thing. I mean, even the word itself means around day. Uh, so it's actually like your full 24 hours. Like the circadian rhythm is actually crazy. Like with, without getting too much boring detail about it. Uh, but it, it even affects like birth and death rates. Like those will line up as your circadian rhythm. Uh, Olympic records are routinely set. There's a direct correlation between it being early afternoon. That's when your circadian rhythm is operating at like its peak. Mm. Um, though there's a direct correlation between your circadian rhythm and Olympic records and gold medals and stuff like that. It's really cool. But, uh, yeah, like there's in 1942, I believe it was 1938. One of those, I can't remember what it is. Uh, there was a dude named Dr. Cleetman. He went into a, he went into Mammoth Cave in Kentucky and a completely pitch black spot. And he spent 32 days there or the research assistants and in complete darkness, as long as they kept up their, uh, like, you know, their habits that they had above ground when they could actually see light, their sleep schedule actually stayed the exact same. So they still had uh, routine exercise. They still had routine meals coming in at the same time. So despite being completely devoid of light, they were awake 15 hours, slept nine hours and went to bed pretty much the same time every single night for 32 days, despite not knowing what time it was at all, other than, you know their routines hmm. so yeah i yeah, feel like cool. it's definitely cool more of your yeah like your routine like if you can if you can, can stay on a consistent schedule day after day after day i feel like your body will mm-hmm. just get used to that yeah absolutely yeah. i mean the only thing that like light from your phone really messes with is melatonin and honestly melatonin isn't actually as important as everyone thinks like it's, it's very placebo based like when you take a melatonin pill melatonin is not governed by the fda yeah uh so there was a study on that as well where they took i believe it was 10 milligram pills um and from a ton of different brands like just you know ones you go buy from uh you know cvs or whatever um and they can contained between three and i want to say 256 i think it was percent of the actual melatonin that was labeled as yeah um, i don't so understand you why they have don't three percent of 10 or 256 well because it's not a controlled substance so there's no reason like and it doesn't even actually do anything like in terms of putting you to sleep so it can fix it can fix something like jet lag it's very effective for jet lag uh but if you just can't sleep all it does is tell your body to prepare for bedtime all it, it doesn't help your body yeah it's not like sleep. a sleeping pill it doesn't knock you the hell out. no no it, it's 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 main thing is to tell your body so it'll it'll do a few things it'll mess with a little bit of hormones um that cause like body temperature and uh affect your metabolism and things like that um so it does that but all it really does is like you know if you equate it to like an olympic runner uh it would just be the gun that you know sets them off it's not actually the process of sleeping or you know running in that case uh, yeah. All it is is tells your body, hey, time to sleep, uh, which doesn't mean you'll go to sleep if you have insomnia or something like that, right? It's it's completely ineffective in that sense. Yeah, magnesium and B1 are like the best you could take for sleep. It actually I'm not you super get... familiar with those, but that's uh, that's interesting. Yeah, magnesium. I mean, I know what they are, obviously. I, I, just, I, just didn't know, I just didn't know that they did that. That's cool. Yeah, and then B1 is also very helpful for, I mean, like you said, it's not it's not a fucking sleeping pill. You're not going to knock yourself no. out. But no. as far as getting yourself to getting your brain to calm down and, um, yeah. Getting a more quality sleep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the main useful. thing is getting yourself a routine. Also exercise in the early day. Don't exercise. Correct. Right before you go to bed. Well, depends. From That's what I've very... read about exercising before bed, um, it, it makes you do that thing where when you're falling asleep, you go, Ooh! you like jerk yourself awake. That's because your body's still, I, I can't remember what the hormone is. So not really. Um, your body produces a lot of, um, uh, oh, oh yeah. God, what is it? I can't think. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> I can't think, nasty. I can't think of, I can't, I cannot remember the name. Um, but essentially the, the, the adrenaline hormone, uh, when you are lifting, but as long as you're not like a literally cortisol, doing no uh, unless you no. unless you're doing that's your stress one yeah it's oh, your stress yeah, hormone. Stress, yeah. Uh, that's the unless you're one. doing a bench like a pr bench and then hopping into the sheets you can work out before bed it's okay as long as you like you know take half an hour to shower and i've been doing nighttime workouts for a long time I, yeah I, they really shouldn't affect anything uh, too hmm. too much it's it's a it's a couple hours before i go yeah, to bed it's not like i'm it's not like I'm running Don't around my basement and then, and then me, 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 like immediately yeah. in bed. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I mean. Like if you do a fucking 700 pound deadlift and hop in the sheets, you're going to be awake. Like you're not going to bed. Right. Yeah. But 
No, I, I, yeah, yeah, and then, you know, also probably I'm sure a lot of that uh, stemmed from people also taking like pre-workout and then being like, oh, I can't sleep after. And it's because their, their brain has so much fucking caffeine. Oh, yeah, I don't even take pre-workout. Because it, it's so. the same idea as like how the myth that came about of like eating before bed will make you fat correct when the reality yeah. is that's not that's not a real thing at all nope um people people used to think that the metabolism stopped while you're sleeping but the your body's metabolism actually runs pretty much the exact same while you're asleep just doing different tasks rather than you unless, know keeping you keeping um, you around sorry go ahead uh, well, i was just gonna say unless you fucking die in your sleep yes. your body is running your metabolism's running yes so. here i mean your brain is running like when you're in rem sleep um your brain parts of it anyway you're so uh, if you just do a brain scan when somebody's in REM sleep, it'll look identical to when they're awake. Um, mm. The only difference, some parts are actually 30% more active when you're in REM sleep than when you're uh, awake. So your brain is, I don't actually know the number on that, but your brain is a pretty substantial portion of your calories is, is you know, your brain power. Um, but then when you're sleeping, I mean, when you're in phase uh, two and phase three of NREM sleep, that's when your brain is doing a lot of or that's when your body's doing a lot of like repair and stuff like that. And then, you know, phase two of NREM as well, you're also doing a lot of like categorizing of long-term memory. So your brain is working hard there too. So like, there's a lot of things that happen while you're sleeping that burn calories. You're not just right. AFK, right? Like you need, you can eat pasta and go to bed. It's not going to make you fat. Yeah, it's just but, calories in calories out. It, like, yeah. Imagine you eat nothing all day and then you eat a <laughs> slice of pizza before bed. Yeah. you you think that's going to make you fat? <laughs> It's like, yeah, no. No, it's not. Well, the reason, sorry, what, the whole reason I went on that tangent, um, the reason that myth kind of came to fruition as it did is obviously when you're tired, you have much higher ghrelin levels. Ghrelin is the hunger hormone. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're more hungry, that's when you're more inclined to eat, you know, higher foods and higher in carbohydrates, higher in fat, uh, more calorie dense. Um, so a lot of the time people would eat shitty food right before bed. And then they would equate that to being, I'm simply gaining weight because I'm eating before bed. Uh, but I think it's kind of the same thing with like people working out where they have pre-workout before they go to the gym, even if it's at 7 p.m. or something. The half-life of caffeine is six hours. So if you go to bed at 10 p.m. Um, and you you know work out at 7 and have pre-workout, like you're going to be awake because of that. Yeah. Uh, it takes your brain quite a while to actually metabolize uh, caffeine properly. And then you know that's when you get hit with that crash after because your brain still produces adenosine the whole time. And then once the caffeine... Is just hit you all at once yeah, yeah your adenosine like receptors truck. are yep yeah i uh that was something i learned that was interesting i used to think that actually like there was um you know energy drinks and things like that that could avoid the caffeine crash um but unless the you know you're physically altering your brain from producing adenosine which you you can't uh you you still fully uh, get the crash because it's it's essentially like using a you know a, a giant piece of cardboard to stop like a, a you know stream of water where it all just build up behind it, and then once it's once there's enough built up behind it, it's just gonna go right through it eventually. So it just mm -hmm. it doesn't stop piling up ever. So uh, if you uh, drink an energy drink that says no crash after, it is it is blatantly lying to you. FYI. Bullshit. Yeah, no five hour energy tries to say that shit. Yep. But anyway, is literally speaking just... of energy, use code goons oh, yeah, at gamer stuff. I've really, and you know I realized what? There's no crash. crash. There's no crash. <laughs> Zero. You will not crash. Gamer Sumps <laughs> actually stops the buildup of adenosine in your brain. It they removes do sell the receptors free, completely. So. They do. Yeah. You so, just want the you know. flavor and some vitamins? Which yep. actually, Wait, I'm pretty sure the caffeine-free tastes slightly better because caffeine is quite bitter. So you should try both. Even if you want the caffeinated one, if you just want some some yummy stuff to drink, get the, get the decaf one. It's, it's yeah. just as good. If not better. Never get tired of cloud piss. Just drink this, mm -hmm. dude. It's better. Drink, drink gamer stuff. You know what I like to do is I like to mix, mix both of them. So like you kind of have like if you make like a bigger one, like a big drink, you can use one scoop of caffeine. Okay, one scoop of and caffeine then caffeine and then free, yeah, so it valid. makes it more flavorful. Yeah, because I think one yeah, scoop is valid. like eight ounces or something. So if you use like a sixteen ounce water bottle, yeah, and you don't want to yeah, use two ounce, scoops of caffeine, like four hundred milligrams yeah. of of shit. Yeah, that's a lot. You can toss the caffeine free one in there too. It's, what do you mean Let's of check. shit? You mean of high quality, good produced caffeine? Yes. Correct. Organic, healthy uh, caffeine. I don't know if we can put say a dick that. on your forehead. I don't. I don't know if we yes. can say organic. I don't know what Is the it fuck not? it comes oh. from. I have Editor, no idea. Kill me. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I, listen, man. I just like the product. I don't know what's going on. It's man. good. I don't know. It tastes great. Get It'll probably kill you. Drink it. It might kill you. It'll be a heart attack. I think it's anyway, a bunch organic. of misinformation right after like the most informative podcast we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> well, who knows? I could have been lying about all that. I could have just misinformed true, you guys yeah. for the last hour. It's so. a Wikipedia you know, article you got to fact check me. Yeah, fa fact check me, everyone. Yeah. All right. 
Eating um, before bed makes you gay. Yeah. I think that just happens to you. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. <laughs> Download on Spotify and like the video and subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. Um, use ten or use code goons to get ten percent off on gamer subs and gamer soups. I think we have those back in stock, so so go Woo! try those out. Yep, it's yep. really good. And, uh, yeah, that's all. Thank you guys for listening. Goodbye. Bye.